Good. Hey, I set up my uh, I set up my sologenic. Nice. Yep. Give me a second. Yeah, how'd you do it? Did you do it through uh, like the Sun Wallet or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's the direction I've been pointing people to. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Me just. It... Sweet. I still have to do mine. Um, I've like done my all my stuff. Do you, have you ever heard of the Rippler M? No. An old school guy. Uh, and I use his wallet. And but I I'm 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 nervous about I know and I I'm just I have everything in cold storage and and I'm nervous about the sum wallet being on like an app on my phone. Right makes- about that too, because as I said yesterday, I have everything on my on cold storage on in my hard wallet. Same as you. And I'm just like and I'm just like, do I really want to transfer everything to a some you know, stop it? You know. Well, I think the air is gonna be well worth it. Um a bit more of a process. I think the sum wallet makes things easier. Yeah. So man. I mean, we've got a little bit of time. I've got I've got a few people like that I personally know, you know, how to set the trust line and stuff. And uh I'm unsure have a brand new uphold account. One of them uh was saying that uh, yeah. for that allow you to withdraw to self custody. Yep. And but that's only if you use your bank um to buy crypto. Yeah. That kind of makes sense because I help and I didn't know they did sort of two different things. And then they did a and then they hit the sixty five day thing. And then they did a transfer from a, uh, but then I I was unsure if the 65 day thing was like 65 days or five days from like when you request to, you know, withdraw to. uh, Um, From when you, from when you initiate an asset from your bank account. Too late then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's not good. Nope. Justification. It's got to be a legal thing or a regulatory thing. Right. I mean, I mean, they say like fraud and stuff, you know, because of its, because I guess ACH, there's a lot of fraud. It really is, is it's basically so that you don't move your money off of Upholds Exchange. They want you to keep your stuff on there. And they're, on there. That. that makes some sense. Like Coinbase doesn't do that. Right, like I can, like I can move my assets within five days. It be days, it should be seconds. Right. What is it? Three to four seconds per ledger close. Yeah. No, I I think there. I've seen and read some regulatory stuff that about uh, how um, self custody might be treated. Because what I saw, what I read was that they might try and treat self custodied assets and seats, oh, which yeah. then brings in a whole nother set of laws and rules. And honestly, I don't know much about all that. Right. And a whole nother set of rules to comply with, uh, probably some taxability. You know. Right. I just don't see how holding your assets as you know, self custody and an asset. Is it is it just because they don't know what's on there? Right? So they're thinking, oh, you know, since we're a foreign asset. Does that make sense? Well, I can sort of see the sense that they can regulate the on and off ramps, right? That's mm-hmm. pretty much where so I make the um cops on the highway, you know, when they get the highway. And and what they do now nowadays is they don't chase the person, copter and radio, and they wait till that person goes to get off the off ramp. So and they have enforcement waiting on the off ramp. And mm-hmm. so I feel like when you go from self when you go self custody, they really can't enforce anything. Mm-hmm. But um, when you go to bring that value back into the off the off ramp. 
And so then they can apply regulation at that. There is at least, and I don't know what the rules are, but there's at least established rules for like U.S. can't enforce laws about, um, you know, how Europe, Brazil, or any other country manages their monetary system. But but if yen or... Oh, what are you talking about? Uh, we're talking about, uh, I guess, city. And, uh, but like when you bring them into the European Union, then they can enforce laws. The cushion. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 it's very complicated. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he said, but, uh, yeah, it's like that's, that's like the off ramp, you know having enforcement ability so so speaking of that Carmen what um, in your think will get past all this regulation BS um, I mean obviously coinbase you also got like LCX that's in Switzerland but but I just don't know about like the other ones like off-brand type of exchanges if you want to call them that um, Coinbase will probably uh, end up compliant because of their size. Uphold, I think, will become compliant. I, do you know who Greg Kidd? Okay, so Greg Kidd started Uphold, and he was one of the first guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to be at the Fed before that. He was a payment system. Mm -hmm. And so I think Uphold will do well uh bracken i believe has already applied for a banking license so they'll probably do well i don't know the rest of them I know their names like bitstamp i would think would do well uh world um probably crypto.com <laughs> now that they got the stadium starts with a b uh Finance. They have an American subsidiary. Finance, yeah. yeah. Sure, they'll figure it out. They got enough money to fig have lawyers figure it out. Uh, space is going to get competitive. Yeah. You, you know, you know, Greg Kidd, he, he, uh, he, he run. A lot of people are saying that's like part of a, that's like Mark of the Beast, you know, the global ID, because it's all D. So I don't know. Oh, I think that's a big deal. That's a bigger deal. It's, it's kind of like the third leg to the stool. Like yeah. you, you need to have, I've just been lazy and I haven't signed up for it, but um, globally is going to be a very significant piece of the puzzle. Right. Okay. So, dude, Greg Kidd's a mastermind, man. Um, And Global ID, I act that particular project, but it's a big one. It's a very yeah. significant And I still got to do more reading up on it also, but I, I don't know. I'm just kind of nervous about having all my, that I don't know. I get it. I mean, you can do Facebook. Um, but, I, and I get it. I've talked to some people who have just said it was pretty easy. And what does it do it, for you, though? Like at the end of the day, <laughs> current day, like in current times. Okay. Uh, but what was saying? Um, it, a, it wasn't too difficult. B, takes your identity from say like multiple different networks. So maybe a state issued ID, maybe a bunch of different. Uh, identification verification you know by the time i mean almost like when you go to get a i don't know if you're in the states or not but when you go to get an id show you know hey this is my address because i pay bills here mm -hmm. it kind of like that and then they verify you know that that you are actually who you are and there's more to it than i understand yeah quite. okay i think that's done on a distributed Ledger, distributed database, whatever you want to call it. And 
that can be used for there's several other network to D framework and that basically can stand in for the mission. Which is, I mean, you can the unregulated, unmitigated situation. That's never going to happen. Yeah. So the thing, that, the one thing with Global ID, though, is they have to, you know, the with Global ID, right, to, to accept your Global ID, accept, you know, they have to be part of that service, right, that business or whatever uh, uh i don't know that sounds roughly correct yeah, yeah. Hmm. there there are certain services that are i think they're relying on global id to conform or to you know what's the word to to comply with uh, KYC AML regulation, this stuff comes in. It's, it's it, it, yeah, it's more for regulatory compliance. Thanks. Yeah. I don't know. It's a hell of a cool project, completely honest. Yeah, yeah. But I know a Greg project. Like Greg Kid's pretty badass dude. Yeah. So what else is on your mind today? Uh, I don't know, man. Trust line. I've been having a few people reach out to me about exactly that. I'm concerned. Uphold sixty five day, you know, withdrawal just might not be good for some of my friends and stuff uh who have i I don't want people in the wrong direction so about that and i i'm i don't i don't even know the full answer did you have to uphold it or did you already were you already self-custody so still on uphold um but i'm thinking i should be able for the 24th to be able to withdraw that amount. Um, majority of my assets are on my hard wallet. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the 65 day thing is really annoying, you know, but. I wonder if you're correct and that's just sort of customer retention type effort, or if there is, there's probably some sort of regulatory. 65 days is an odd number of days. I mean, I can see 30 days or 40 brackets. Where does 65 days come from? I mean, it's like an arbitrary number. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm worried geared towards uphold. Either that or maybe uphold will honor they did the flare and songbird. Hmm. But Exchanges like Uphold and GitHub, etc., because as these exchanges or as these airdrops come and then like DeFi builds out, and, and these exchanges, you know, they're going to have to build new and enable the the things that these are making possible, mm-hmm. and that's a lot of work, man. Like that's yeah. So I don't know. They're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Like, do we just allow people to build out an interface to allow these people to enter engage with the services, and then and then if they allow people to engage with the DeFi service, hey, hold on a second. Whoa, like the compliance guys are going. Wait a second. Like, hold on. They're really, I feel like, probably between a rock and a hard place with this stuff. Yeah, at the end of the day, and it's just like, you know, if we don't honor it, then 
you know, retention. And, it, you know, so. Yeah, it's, it's, they're really in a predicament. I mean, in one sense, it's like, have certain problems in life, right? Yep. If you have a problem where your customers are uh, services to them, you know, that's a good problem to have. But it's still an issue thought about pretty carefully. Hey, and yes, and I see you too. How you doing? Changes are going to have like an exponential building curve because as all, I mean, holy moly, they're going to have to create a UI platforms and they all create different functionality. So none of them are the same. The code you built for one DeFi project and, you know, reuse it for. How they call how they call stuff. Sorry, guys, I see I've come into this conversation half, halfway through. Um, here's a question. Um, with Songbird, you're able to you're able to delegate, etc. And then, will there be a function where we'll be able to delegate, stake our XRP, and then is that something in the making? I mean, will we have to sell our XRP for these other coins? I mean, Spark, what is the avenue for us? Well, that comes down to the F asset F assets, and I don't know if they're going to do this on Songbird. I have a feeling they are. And a very small percentage of my holdings, um, they they agents are like basically for the F assets. There's going to be agents which are more, and you send them your XRP right on the XRP ledger. So it, the X is your control. To me, that's risky. And then Flare Wallet address and and they deposit. F X R P or network, maybe they would call it S X R P and uh to that you give the agent and then minus a fee and the the like F X R P on the on the flare network for yield generation and what uh, or in various smart contracts like with flare finance and uh, I don't know. I kind of ran out of things to say live yet. So I'm waiting for that. It's about that. Very curious. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just interesting to see how the, you know, these other layers that are coming out, I mean, song great, but you know, if you, if you look at XRP and what it's able to do, I mean, if it's what there's something missing, and also, what is the threat to banks with regards to that? Because the post recently now just saying that you transfer your USDC onto crypto.com. Um, you know, so if you've got a $200,000 sitting there, you're getting $2,000 uh, a month. But surely you should be able to do that. If XRP is going to be a stable coin for the banks at whatever price, surely that, I mean, is it is it a thing of they can't, they can't build that onto it? Or... Not sure I entirely followed that. Can you say that again? Exchanges where if you hold your coins, you can you can um, stake it, earn it, so you can throw it down, etc. But giving an example, like on Crypto.com, they're running a campaign with USDC coin, and you 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 put that aside, you can earn twelve percent on that. Okay. Now, well, wait, what are you what are you staking into? What? You can earn, you can just as having it there in a savings account on crypto.com, you can get 12% interest. But where's where's the risk? I mean, I don't believe in reward without risk. I'm too deeply into it. I'm just saying on all the exchanges, you can put your coins to the side and you can, yeah, the risk is there. But at the same time, um, when does XRP, is there something in reality? Because there's a lot of people that are sitting with, you know, quite a, a chunk of XRP that isn't a bird, um, and then delegate because they're getting rewards of, of Songbird, and then they're switching it back. When does XRP actually come out of this, with with that part of it? <laughs> that a wild weekend. <laughs> yeah, no worries. It's Thanksgiving weekend here. I'm, I think that, and, you know, I would fall into that bucket of 
I think that when Flair actually launches the production network and probably yep. uh, when they start with the F assets, you can make some money off of off of your XRP. I, years ago, I said, I have no idea how this is going to happen, but I have a feeling able to earn cash flow on this XRP asset. And the F assets is the first thing I've seen that seems legit. That. But it's not live yet. It's not even live on Songbird. The, uh, the delegation for the FTSOs live, I think on some assets live and oh what's the third? There's a third and then and then once they run those three functionalities for a little bit and make sure the system's stable, the flare network into production mode. There's a third function. It's like a, a key function. No idea for my end color. They have to flush out on Songbird before. Give me a second. I'll think of it. It's definitely FTSO, F assets, and oh, maybe governance. I forget where I read that. Anyway, maybe I'll, I've got a chat going with Hugo. So, what he says. He's probably not going to answer me immediately anyway. You guys can keep talking. Give me a second. I'm going to write a message. Maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's other projects launching, like Trustline, Flare Finance. Because those projects are up, right? Boys, good luck. Enjoy. Um, have a good one. And yeah, hopefully I look forward to seeing you during the week. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I just sent Hugo a message, you know, hopefully. Yeah, I, I don't think. It, well, I guess you're not going to see the return for. I mean, that's got to make sense, right? Just raise your hand, and it's free to free for anybody to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, you're good. So hi everyone. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to um to all the speakers. Um, um I'm a software engineer based out here in the UK and um I've been building for close to 20 years. Um and I'm new in this space. And I, obviously I know this is the space to be in. The 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 blockchain ecosystem of choice, uh, myself and some of my co for obvious reasons that I, I suspect everybody here knows. Um, and so recently what I do is to understand how how we can write dApps, you know, on APIs. Obviously, you know, our job is to look at the documentation, go in there into the Git repo, and, which is what we're actually in the process of doing. 
but the, the why I appreciate the, um, there's a lot of knowledge that a lot of us are not privy to, and that gets disenables us to when we're playing with the APIs or we go into the SDKs and the documentation in a lot more and how the whole thing connects together. So one of the things I was trying to establish smart contract functionality on this on this ecosystem, that being um, the XRPL ledger. Thing that happened, I'm not sure if it was yesterday or day before. I think it was day before. Kind of answered uh-huh. those questions. Discussion. Yeah, the hooks discussion. That's correct. Yes. And that was um so the hooks on the federated side chain. Now I have all the all the necessary links on GitHub in front of me. I kind of understand. And it's really just a question of um, you know, we we developers just going in there to play in this in this in this discussion on um pretty much. But the question I now have for you guys on this ecosystem, the XRPL, um I mean, what are your thoughts, developers? Do you think um, there's a lot of developers coming into this space and injecting the pipeline that involves um, NFTs on the um, on the X reason why I, I came into this space? And that is going to most likely progress in the next couple. That's pretty much really is, you know, just wanted to know what your thoughts are in terms of development. Do we see adoption from the development community? Um, is the development, um, XRPL development con- community. There is a Twitch, there's a Twitch um, session that happens that's driven by, I think it's, it's Mario. Um, but I just wanted to know if there's, there's, there's a bit more information in that regard that can help people. Like- so uh, Matt Hamilton is definitely the authority to go to and look to, there's a growing community. I mean, a couple of years ago in terms of developers and, and even still today, XRPL developers are, are, um, you know, I'm not a developer. I understand sort of the code architecture, but I'm not a developer myself. Uh, and then I'm trying to think of where to point you in the right direction. There, there is some NFT project L or what are they? I think it's XRP Ledger Grants. Have you looked at that? Yes, I have in front of me. Um, I've looked at that. I've also seen the applications such as the, um, uh, I have access to all that information now, um, thanks to the, the the conversation from yes. So, um, you know, in terms of, in terms of resources, I think I have, I think I have really everything I need. It's just more, um, um, because, so I, I work in the financial industry here in um, in the UK. I can confidently tell you that most of the financial institutions in there run. Um, that's how much in bed these people are with you know with the powers that be. Um, so I would imagine um, going chain development um, that developers would have to understand patients going forward for the future. So uh, I'm, I'm a bit astonished. Uh, I'm a bit ignorant, and and there there does exist one, and, and I just haven't yet tapped into it. It's still early days even in the whole blockchain um, space, and um, that will grow. Yeah, I your gut your gut feeling is right. There there should be. There's not though. Uh, I think it's it's growing. Uh, it is still developer community. There's probably ten jobs. P Ledger. I mean, I'm, I'm just making that up, but roughly that's chat is recorded. So if you're in the financial space, you know, don't suffer. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's easy to me because it's been almost 10 years, but it's still early day. XRP Ledger Org, you know, is good. Part of the reason I've started these chats again. This is a recorded chat, so I don't know how much you want to ask, but architecture of the the code and, you know, XRP ledger and internet. So if you have a specific, like, type of uh, problem, you can point you in the right direction. Not a guarantee. Yeah, so, so incidents, because the question I was going to ask, um, somebody bit me to it in yesterday's conversation by yourself. Um, Matt Hamilton, 
And I think um, another developer on the team works, connects with the XRPL ledger and hooks and NFTs and how all that interrelates. And I think I've, 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 I've listened to that, um, or at least I've watched it because I know you have it on your um, at list or listened to that at least um, three or four times. Um, so that was really helpful. And that obviously has so you have anything other than just to go in there and play with the APIs. So I'm, I'm good for now because um, I'm sure there are a lot more people like myself out there. So, oh, how do I say this? Uh, well, like, well, I, intend, I, I, I intend to. That is the, um, um, again, I, I'm new in this space, but my, 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 my strategy or my plan is with those things. I'm familiar with all the programming languages that the, um, that's supported in that space, um, WebAssembly. I know how all these things actually work from the tech stack. Um, um, so on GitHub, um, run all that stuff. I think I need to have a validator node running, which kind of my my hook would actually execute. And then the plan then is to is to probably build and then get the hook to talk to that and then get a response back. That's the way I want to approach my experience. <laughs> Did you did so you know the XRP led? No, no, I'm, I'm again. So this is like um, this. I think is in terms of my um, in terms of in terms of even knowing about the XRPL ledger. I just um, there were always going to be one or two. I made my mind up on. It was either going to be this or a there for for many reasons. Um, and I'm quite comfortable with that. Um, and then the next question was okay. Um, and so I needed a way to um leverage smart contract functionality and so pretty much answered my questions allowed me to track down the necessary documentation and what i can actually do um what was also interesting from some of the docs i read today is rpl labs are built um well they built a series of applications but the particular one of interest is um they've done some very very interesting things they're using their apis and so um leverage that functionality to to add some features into their app. Um, and so they call it because then other, other developers like myself might have other use cases and then they can leverage. Then maybe in the future when federated side chains comes into play um, as a first class SEM, if I'm not mistaken, then you can even do even more interesting things. So uh, I'm just either there or they're ready to go. And I'm quite confident um, the adoption rate in the months to come. And I'm just I'm just glad I'm I'm here, you know, because we're still in the um and again, that's yeah. all that's all thanks, that's all thanks to that's all thanks to you guys. Yeah. It's still early. Like I said, man, I'm not a coder, unfortunately. I should probably just get my hands dirty. But uh was that you've got the production network XRP ledger. There's like three to, uh there's the test net that is kind of edger has their own test net and that's where you can start playing with hooks i also learned yesterday because matt made a statement that call it out or go down the conversation on that but he said that the chains before matt said this and i i need to find find some clarity on how exactly there's something about like the Fed, like I was thinking federated side chains are kind of like Flare, right? You know, granted, you've got agents that are the connection point between the two ledgers. Now, the federated side chains still have XRP as the base unit of currency or base type thing. That's a big deal if I heard him right. If it's the case, then I have some things to learn. Uh but if you're trying to play with hooks, you have to get in with the XRP Labs guys test net as a practical. System. Okay. Yeah, and I and I'm honestly very excited. Yeah, very much so. It's it's uh, gonna open up. Oh man, I don't even. It's like. Uh, how do you think they've opened up stuff? I mean, from 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 the discussion yesterday and and just looking, I've seen so far the possibilities are endless. I mean, it it just seems very powerful. Um, 
a distinction between the two, the hooks and the federated side chains in terms of the way um, the way it's defined. Uh, so I'm kind of itching really to to write some code in that space. It's the kind of stuff developers like myself. And like I said, I'm just happy to be in this space early. Um, uh, you know, um, so ever. And I haven't even written a line of code as yet. Haha. <laughs> so, you know. Um, you started to familiarize yourself with, you know, there's a whole bunch of different transaction types that the XRP ledger has. There is. I haven't gone that far. Like I said, this is probably, this is probably day, day five, if I'm not missed from, again, a potential um, project I have in the pipeline. Um, um, you know, I'm uh, close to 20 years, um, different kinds of software, mobile applications as well. So I am an NFTs and smart contracts is all new, but again, nothing is really new under the sun. It's just putting it together. Most of the time, it's just being able to, to connect the dots, like figure out what exactly I need to do to play with the APIs on the test net, like you said, and then familiarize myself with the APIs. Then um, I mean, like the possibilities are any. Um, but let's see. Let's see. Well, so on personal BS version of how I so you've got the XRP ledger, right? It's like a like a like an orientation type thing. Or Ripple D, whatever you want to call it. And within Ripple D, you have several dozen types of transactions. And then, you know, you've finality, order books, trust lines, and each one of these trust line of all these different parameters on a trust line and I'm probably using the wrong terms but big one um the the ledger itself has within side of itself I think that's huge absolutely huge and very well underappreciated oh so that I'm a finance guy uh so escrow and you've got check uh the capacity to move kind of like push so now you've got like a time shift ability and finance is frankly all about time oh gosh i'm gonna forget there's so many things all of these features you've got uh the freeze feature you've got issuing you know ask ask there's all this stuff and and so when i look at hooks and i think back on you know the library of features that the XRP led because a hook can trigger any of those embedded transactions. You can stack those transaction types and then you can start getting creative and that's where, and then I don't know if I have, Oh man, it's really, there's so much that proved on the main net. And I think it will do the grapevine. Um, and and, and so, sorry for cutting you off. When 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 are we on the main um, on the main line? There's no saying. I think you're maybe the first half of next year, and I, that that might be optimistic. A little thing. Are you in on uh, XRP Labs forum? Okay, Richard's the main guy leading hooks. I think I've subscribed to his Git repo. Uh, That's probably a good place. To and what about federated side chains? Um, do we know when likely that is likely to get moved onto or, or released? I I believe that I'm behind on that. I, I heard some stuff from uh, yesterday that led me to believe that I'm not understanding some things that are significant. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate all the, um, all the info. Yeah, it, it's. And, and, and the other thinking about it, I can't, I haven't quite figured it out. Uh, or, uh, said something about creating AMMs where you can put value. So you don't have to expose yourself to the impermanent loss risk. Huge. Absolutely huge from a financial. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't. 
some of the stuff I've like heard of that makes any sense. No, that's fine, Chin. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, it's all terribly like I'm. Yeah, the and the hooks thing, hook federated side chains. You know, forget the being able to do a which that's massive. Uh, but the other, oh man, they just, it opens up so many opportunities. It's like, yeah, it's a, you, it becomes like asking yourself that kind of question. I don't know if you've looked at that yet. Um, is that, does that have to do with quant or is that, the, is that, is that just a protocol that, um, to implement uh based on that comment i'm assuming you know okay you need to look that up if you're interested in this stuff okay uh, well, uh, ripple guys basically created it they gave it to the w3c so, uh there is no ledger so the protocol like uh that kind of thing mm -hmm. and uh it ledgers, whether they're blockchains or private bank ledgers or what, you know, network together. So just like the internet is a network of networks, right? Uh, call for these networks to network together. And it's your big deal going forward. It's it's ISO 20022 compliant. You're going to want to brush up on that are you familiar with um with quant quant network okay so, so so what they do is they um they connect all the world's distributed ledgers for faster It'd be fair to say that the kind of protocol they're using for that kind of functionality would be would it would be then but if that is some kind of like um industry standard comp um protocol network such as that could use that yeah uh probably so the way they describe themselves on their um on their site is they they're connecting all the worlds um so are they providing routing functionality they are connecting all the world's distributed ledgers now it could it could just be i mean that could mean there was a connection between that protocol the interledger protocol you mentioned and um and how this particular was providing this um, distributed ledger functionality that they they're probably in the same neighborhood if, I would if imagine so, yeah. the the inner ledger protocol is not a ledger there there is no ledger to uh inter network with other ledgers yeah so, 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 um i don't know um algo um ethereum and um XRPL can use that protocol, the interledger protocol. Is that what you're what you're referring to? Yeah. Correct. Government ledger, what have you. Yeah. But there is no ledger. It's it's like an HTTP, like there's some TP. It's just like you run an email service, I run an email service. There's a protocol we understood. Understood. Makes sense. I'm gonna say, based on what you said, uh really don't know quant that well but it sounds like it's in the same ballpark of trying to using a real i didn't quant like have its own ledger well i mean um underneath the covers but i know that they're playing a very significant role in terms of um blockchains together i just don't know the uh, i don't know more than that but like you said um for sure um, but the way they go about implementing this could be completely different, a completely different protocol or interrelated in terms of the kind of things they do. Well, so, just, uh, the, so you know who the W3C is? Yeah, yeah, indeed. The interledger protocol to the W3C. And then a couple of years later, which is a couple of years, adopted it. And you can look up W3C interledger and you know, these are there and I'm pretty damn sure like 95 plus percent sure, uh, adopted interledger as the protocol for. 
I'm just trying to point you in the right direction. I, I think I, I, I get it. Much appreciated, really. Very helpful stuff. Thank you. That's why I'm doing these chats, is to help people, you know, I've, I've been hanging around this community for, Jesus, almost 10 years, obviously. Um, so if I can help speed up other folks, then, you know, that's worth my time. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Worries. Uh, anyway, if we go, if we go on hooks and all that stuff, I can talk about other things. I'm going to, I, I tried to edit. I did one of these the other night. Uh, editing took too long. I'm trying to record these things and stick them up on YouTube and they tried to cut that stuff out. Maybe I'll just leave it this next time. It's too much effort to be honest to, to, to like try and edit it. Digital media editor. So do you mind me asking what kind of project something with NFTs? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a, um, it's an NFT, you know, it's, 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 it's for, it's for a client and, um, we're still mapping out the, it's, it's, it's going to be built on the XRPL. Um, and we would need to listen why I'm interested in hooks and this federated, um, side chains, um, and then also, I wanted to know my options in terms of some of these layer two solutions and, and how that how that works. Um, and again, you know, it's just it's just coincidentally I stumbled, and somebody asked the exact same question I would have asked. You know, and 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 the discussion by yourself, by Matt Hamilton, and um, and I think a couple of other guys. Um, and and it, and it was just making sense. Um, and I've since then listened to the. Um, to the discussion also again as well that has allowed me to um to fish out the right um you know the right urls um what to do and like i said you know it's just it's just really um you know with the functionality um and i'm sure once i start doing that there's probably going to be maybe some of those questions i might have might be directed to the development team some um, in this forum again um so, you know, watch this space. Uh, it's definitely an area. Um, uh, so I'm just glad to have resources such as yours. Okay. I don't understand the nature of the project you're trying to work on. Business finance person, first and foremost. Uh, I just happen to kind of understand. I would likely go towards the federated sidechain route. My feeling is I would have ownership of that side chain. Does that make sense? Creating, yeah, yeah. So, so the um, the the um, obviously I can't really talk too much about. Um, like, however, however, it's not it's not a financial application in the sense that it's not like a um, it's just something that's NFT rich, if you see what I mean. And it just so happens that our PL, and I would imagine, um. You know, we might we might have to leverage smart contracts. Uh, you know, there would be um, transactions on the on the um, on the XRPL. Um, yesterday's discussion, um, Hooks gives you about ninety percent of what the Ethereum thing would give you, um, and it even gives you a better performance in nanoseconds. So, I wouldn't on the requirement so far. I wouldn't really, really be surprised if the Hooks functionality would suffice um, implementation that we need. And then if we needed to go a bit deeper, um, or we were like, um, what we needed to do, say, for example, if we were the custom hook, for example, I'm sure we could probably, if at all that wasn't enough, then maybe we might have to wait for um, the federated side chains and then get exactly what we want. So it's still very, very, um, instead of build it, one, because it's it's a new, it's a new ecosystem for us development-wise. Um, even, even the hooks, as well hasn't yet been released, but you can play with it. Um, you know there 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 are pros and cons to getting our feet getting our hands dirty in terms of release really playing with some of these things like the hooks um, on the test nets and then building a software gets released or gets published to the main net. Then we can leverage that. 
and obviously then we can we can look we're kind of like just thinking a bit on you know our job is to go in there look at the apis look at the you know try a few things you know a proof of concept yes that works and then we can build on top of it for you know to get the job done then then we're good you know so uh one Oh man, I've got a couple. Of, I'm 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 flip flopping back and forth in my mind between software developer and like business. This as well. Just just go ahead. So I think, and I don't fully don't share the details of what you're trying to do. Um, federated side chain route, but I, that's not live yet. Just like the hooks aren't live. You know that's going to push your production environment out into the future uh, carry on. but the federated side chains is that equally available on the test net my understanding is it, it, it i i i'm not fully up to speed on the test net but i don't think it's anything advanced discussion because they wouldn't have brought it up publicly and were like advanced yeah i i don't think that's anywhere near production yet the hooks is probably more is probably closer to production than than that chains. Um, now the other thing, I don't know what sort of function hooks will enable you to use any and of the existing transaction types within the XRP ledger. So, I'm guessing you're going to be able to create whatever functionality supposed to perform using uh, either existing functionality, this is what I'm referring to, like XRP ledger transaction types, or a combination thereof. That's probably, so that's like point one, point two. If you're going to build on XRP ledger, you really need to learn know them well enough that you can combine them if you're going to use hooks i don't remember what my third point was so let me give you an let me give you a scenario um there is a there's a smart contract um and, I, and my understanding is a smart Hold on. Hold on. i i remember the third the third point was once flare uh if you need something that the first two options can't conduct like can't perform and you could uh port the code over to uh flare validity erc20 or ER, erm smart contract can't figure out in the first two methods and then port it back to the xrp ledger bases are covered across the way that's precisely what i was just going to say regarding the flare plan now i can see i can see myself i can see us um using a hook or can have more than one um to call out to um a smart on a network like flare network yeah to go yeah. get of um response yeah so i make a request and i get a response back it comes back to i can do whatever i want to do internally within the ledger that's the way i understand the smart contract on the um on the xrp Say that again. You lost me when you brought in. The Say, for example, a transaction comes in. Um, via, um, so my so on my application, a transaction. I up a hook, yeah. And this hook I have is meant to go talk to some um, that's probably deployed via um, the Flare networks, yeah. For example, let's do it, and I get a response back, and that's the way I'm leveraging smart contracts where. We can probably move the federated side chains option to one side because that's not going to be available anytime soon. It's actually feasible. You'd probably be playing with hooks plus, flight. but for as a business person, I would want to. I would I own the chain. Yeah, but the 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 problem with that is is before class citizen on the XRPL. Um. That's not going to happen anytime soon. The software, hooks, if we want hooks to do might be, hooks, hooks might be six months out. So what about federated side chains? What, like one year, two years? <laughs> but I, I don't think that's crazy. Yeah, so well, my, my point is, my point is hooks will come. 
Probably. I think that's a, a relatively good. Yeah. So yeah. if we um and ship the software at some point in early 2022, Rex, using the XRPL as it is today, then the be using hooks. Is is that the case or? Well, I mean, the honest answer is I have no freaking clue. But yeah, you're yeah. probably right. Like hooks are probably going to go into production relatively around the same time. Okay. So, yeah. so no, I, mean, I have no like knowledge. I'm just yeah, guessing. Yes. That whenever our Flare Networks goes live, then the way we would be able to connect on the Flare Networks um, ecosystem would be either holdable on the main net at that particular point in time would either be either or. I think you're right, but say that again. The functionality from the smart contract functionality that the Flare Networks brings to, um, at, from a programmatic pers um, perspective, yeah, the way I would leverage that feature would either be via A, hooks, or B, FET is live at the time on the XRPL. Or, is or then if you use the clear network, you've got to go through an agent. So there's a cost associated there. Could you explain what that third option actually is? So flare network to the uh, uh, to the XRP ledger. Yeah. Basically a foot in both sides of networks. So I use the vernacular agent. It could be a market maker. It could be a connector. It could be a spent nouns for, for the role. I'll just stick with Flare. Uh, use it, account with XRP ledger and then account. Or so if you want to mint like F XRP, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you ledger to the agent's XRP ledger wallet, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they get the Flare wallet where I want to receive my FXRP mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. uh, doing, you know, what they do. The business model could include collecting fee. Maybe you're the agent, right? And once the FXRP is on the Flare network, you, you know, the EVM smart contract on 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 that do whatever processing or you know computation you need to do there and then the through the agent to the xrp ledger so then the value lead player network and then uh you know whatever you do with it from there you know whatever and i, I, don't, I haven't grasped that yet Okay, so now that third option is actually quite interesting. Flare Network's documentation. I should be able to find information on how to fire up such as XRPL. Is that correct? Well, you know, pay fees to. Or, and I'm speaking as a business. Okay. Let's look at that option as well. Um, because that's that's pretty new to me, but that's fine. Yeah, I mean it. It's a uh, that there's basically unlimited potential. I don't know. I'm gonna probably kill this um, dinner. So, look, it's been an it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, um, and thank you very much. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't. I hope you don't mind. I'm trying to make educational videos and stuff so that people can learn about. It. Okay, cool, man. Thank well, you. I appreciate the conversation as well. So thank you.